In retirement, it's likely that the majority of your income is going to come from your pensions, which is why if you want to achieve the highest income possible, you need to optimize your pension to reduce the amount of tax you pay when taking money out of it, which is hard to do because there are so many pitfalls you can fall into. Like in the example that I'm about to show you where a couple were due to make simple mistakes that could see them paying an extra 130,000 pounds in tax. These are mistakes that I see people making all the time, which is why I wanted to make this video so that you can avoid them in the future. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is James. I am a financial planner and this is a place where you can learn to make smarter financial decisions. The lessons you're gonna learn in this video are relevant no matter how large your pension is or whether you're a basic or higher rate taxpayer. So please don't be put off simply because this example involves a higher rate taxpayer with a larger pension. And we're also going to be looking at an interesting way to maximize the income you receive from a defined benefit pension. So make sure you stick around. Neil and Grace are clients of mine that I met six months ago. At that time, Neil was 57 and Grace was 55 and they were looking to retire immediately. Their goal was to have £5,000 of income coming in each month throughout retirement, which was really important to them as they had children living in three different countries. So a large part of this income would go towards spending time with their family. In terms of assets, Neil had been paying into a workplace pension for a long time, but since they'd paid off their mortgage, he'd significantly ramped up his contributions and grown his pension to 800,000 pounds. Grace had spent most of her working career working for the government, and she had a defined benefit local government pension that was set to pay out £9,000 per year from the age of 65 with an £18,000 tax-free lump sum. And they were both due to qualify for full state pension. So they're targeting an after-tax income of £60,000 per year throughout retirement. When Grace turns 65, her local government pension will come online providing £9,000 of income. Then they'll both get their state pensions at 67. So after 68, half of their income will come from these guaranteed income sources, which is great. But it means that Neil's pension is going to have to provide all of their income in the early years of retirement, which is a big ask. So he's going to have to make sure to draw the money out of his pension in the most tax efficient way possible. But this is where most people make mistakes. With a defined contribution pension, you can start drawing money out of it once you reach 55, although this age is set to increase to 57 from 2028. When you do get access, there are two parts to your pension, a taxable part and a tax-free part. 25% of it you can take as a tax-free cash lump sum, whilst the other 75% is taxable and you pay marginal rates of income tax when you draw it down. Most people understand that drawing too much from the taxable side of your pension is a bad idea. It's the tax-free part that people are much more likely to make mistakes with. Given that you can seemingly take your tax-free cash without consequence, it can be tempting to dip into it to help pay for emergencies or upgrading a car or perhaps to pay off a mortgage. But dipping into your tax-free cash early on is often a big mistake. Let me show you why. When I met Neil, this was his plan. Given that they're about to retire, he wanted to build up a cash buffer and have at least two years worth of retirement expenditure sitting in cash or fixed term deposits. The importance of having a cash buffer in retirement is something that I talk about in a lot of my videos because it can help you to feel much more secure when you know exactly where your short-term cash flow is coming from so that you're then less concerned about the rest of your money that is remaining invested. It's an essential part of retirement planning. And now that interest rates are high, this can be even more effective. So to build up his cash buffer, Neil was planning on taking tax-free cash from his pension, which would give him a cash runway of three years worth of expenses, leaving the taxable part of his pension to grow and then provide an income for the rest of retirement which sounds like a sensible plan, but it's actually very tax inefficient. In the first three years of retirement, as he's living off tax-free cash, there's no tax to pay. But for the years after that, to achieve 60,000 pounds of after-tax income, he's going to need to draw down almost 80,000 pounds per year from his pension, which means he's paying almost 20,000 pounds a year in tax. The whole idea of a pension is to try and get as much tax relief as you can when putting money into it and to pay as little tax as you can when taking money out. So if you get 40% tax relief going in and then you pay no tax or basic rate tax when paying out, that is a big win. But if you have to pay 40% tax on the way out, 
you're losing a lot of that benefit. Which is why when it comes to retirement, you need to be tactical with drawing money from other assets alongside the taxable part of your pension to try and keep yourself in lower tax bands. And one of the best assets you have to do this is the tax-free part of your pension. You do not need to take your tax-free cash as one big lump sum at the start of retirement. Instead, you can choose to take it bit by bit whenever it makes sense to do so. The simplest approach is that for every thousand pounds you take out of your pension, you take 750 pounds from the taxable part and 250 pounds from the tax-free part. And if Neil had done that in this year, it would have reduced his tax bill from 19,000 pounds down to just 7,700 pounds. So if instead of taking his tax-free cash up front, Neil held onto it and took a portion every year, he would be projected to save 116,000 pounds worth of tax over the course of his retirement, with the majority of that tax saving coming in the first 15 years where their plan is most vulnerable. This is a massive benefit, but it could be done even more tax efficiently, as with this strategy, there are still some years where he'd be paying 40% tax. So he could choose to take slightly more tax-free cash in those years to avoid paying 40% tax and then slightly less tax-free cash in other years where he'd only be paying 20%. This type of forward-looking analysis is really important so that you can formulate a strategy of how you're going to draw down from your different assets in retirement. But in reality, your spending is likely to fluctuate from year to year. It's going to increase in line with inflation and tax rules are likely to change, which means that you're still going to need to assess this on a year by year basis. But you get the idea. Rule number one is that you need to use your tax-free cash to supplement your income in a way that is going to save you the most tax. And then keeping that rule in mind, rule number two is to try and hold on to the tax-free part of your pension so that it can continue to grow. Right now, Neil is entitled to £200,000 of tax-free cash. But if he keeps this invested within the pension, it will keep growing so that he could draw down even more tax-free cash in the future, up to the lifetime allowance limit of £268,000. So by implementing this strategy, Neil and Grace would be projected to avoid £116,000 of tax. But there's also another mistake that they were going to make or an opportunity that they were going to miss. Grace's local government pension is due to pay out £9,000 from the age of 65. However, like many DB pensions, the scheme allows early retirement, where she could start drawing the pension as early as 55 if she sacrifices some of the income. We asked the scheme for a quote, and they said that if Grace wants to draw her pension at 55, she would instead get £5,600 per year of income. That's a 37% reduction, and a tax-free cash lump sum of £14,950, a 21% reduction. If she takes a pension at 55, yes, she'll be paid less per year, but because she starts receiving that income earlier, it would take the original pension quite some time to catch up. Meaning that if Grace dies before the age of 79, she'd be better off taking the pension at 55. But if she lives longer than that, she'd be better off waiting until 65. Grace is currently in good health and has a life expectancy of 87 years. So the 65 option seems better. But what about tax? If Grace starts receiving her pension at 65, between 65 and 68, she'll pay no tax on that income as it falls within her personal income tax allowance. But once her state pension kicks in, she'll be paying 20% tax on most of her local government pension. Whereas if she started receiving it at 55, she won't be paying any tax on that income until 68. And thereafter, a smaller proportion will be taxed at 20%. What's more is that because Grace would have 5,600 pounds of tax-free income coming in during those first few years of retirement, that's £5,600 less that needs to be taken from Neil's pension, where he's being taxed 20 or even 40%. So each year, they'd also be saving £1,100 in tax on top of the savings that they're already making by being tactical with Neil's tax-free cash. So overall, with these two changes, they'd be set to save £130,000 of tax, and that's without taking into consideration inflation. Because in reality, as the years go on, they're going to need much more than £60,000 to maintain their purchasing power. And given that tax bans have a habit of not increasing in line with inflation, much larger portions of this income is then going to fall into higher rate tax bans. So these strategies would probably end up saving them much, much more in tax. What's more, 
is that for every pound of tax you save, that's an extra pound that gets to remain invested and continue to grow. Meaning that these strategies could very well end up saving Neil and Grace several hundreds of thousands of pounds over their lifetime. Or if you look at it the other way, the mistakes that they were about to make could have cost them several hundred thousand pounds. But there's even more that we can do here, which brings us on to the third mistake. Neil and Grace's assets are one-sided with most of the pension assets in Neil's name, which is causing Neil to have to pay a lot of tax on his pension withdrawals at the start of retirement, whilst Grace is sitting there with unused personal income tax allowances. So would it have made more sense to try and even this out in the years leading up to retirement by reducing Neil's pension contributions and building up a private pension for Grace with the aim that in the first few years of retirement, she can then draw money out of it tax-free using her personal income tax allowance, which would also reduce the amount of income that needs to be drawn from Neil's pension. Up until this point, Neil was a higher rate taxpayer whilst Grace was a basic rate taxpayer. So when Neil made a pension contribution, he would get 40% income tax relief. And because he's doing this via salary sacrifice, he was also saving on employees' national insurance at 2%, giving him an effective tax relief of 42%. However, we've projected that in the first 15 years of retirement, when he comes to take money out of his pension, he'll be paying 40% tax at the top end, which cancels out most of this tax relief. Grace, on the other hand, was a basic rate taxpayer. So if she contributed to a private pension, she'd be getting 20% tax relief going in. But given that Grace is set to have unused personal income tax allowances at the start of retirement, she could draw an additional £9,300 out of this pension each year and not pay any tax. And if she's able to do that, it would be much more tax efficient than Neil paying 40% tax on his withdrawals. And by the way, even if Grace was not working and had no income, she could still make a pension contribution of up to £2,880 per year and she'd still get 20% tax relief. So this is possible even if your other half is not working. Most people assume that if they are in a higher tax bracket than their other half, then they are the ones that should be making the bulk of the pension contributions because they're the ones that get the most tax relief when it goes in. But you also need to consider how much tax you're likely to pay at the other end, because there are lots of scenarios where this does not make sense. As an example, let's say that instead it looked like Neil was only going to pay 20% tax at the top end when withdrawing income from his pension. With this, it looks like it's then more advantageous for Neil to continue making the pension contributions. But if Neil already has a big pension and it's likely that his pension might grow above the lifetime allowance, this would mean that he might not get tax-free cash on the additional pension contributions he's making, which would make it then more tax efficient to redirect those contributions to Grace. Or what if Grace worked for a company that operated a salary sacrifice pension like Neil's? Then as a basic rate taxpayer, she'd be getting 20% income tax relief on her pension contributions, Plus, she'd also be saving on employees' national insurance, which is 12%, giving her an effective tax relief of 32%, which again would shift the numbers in favor of making contributions for Grace. To work out what is best for you, you're going to need to make some assumptions about your income needs in retirement, what assets and other income you might have at that time, and even how tax bans might be likely to change, which makes this analysis really hard to do with any degree of accuracy until you're closer to retirement. So please do not tie yourself in knots trying to make predictions 10 or 20 years into the future. But just keep in mind that diversification and having a split of assets between you is often the best strategy. As you've seen, the goal with pensions is to try and maximize the amount of tax relief you get on the way in and minimize the amount of tax you pay on the way out. And if you optimize this correctly, you could end up being able to spend much more in retirement or this could enable you to retire years earlier. But on top of this, there are four other levers that you can pull to enable you to retire earlier and with more confidence which is why you should now watch this video here where I tell you what they are and how you can implement them. I'll see you there.